Eee. Hi everyone, Pop the Mini Pop, Pop Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Foxygen album, Hang. Foxygen, who I have reviewed on a couple occasions in the past, are a singing-songwriting duo consisting of Jonathan Rado and Sam France, two West Coast boys on Jag Jaguar Records. This, I believe, is like their fourth or fifth album at this point. And for me personally, through all of these albums, it has been an interesting ride, from the fantastic lo-fi and kind of ambitious Take the Kids Off Broadway. The songs on this album were sporadic, constantly shifting in sound and in style. It was like listening to a band suffer from music musical schizophrenia, Foxygen on a dime would turn and hit you with some Bowie, some Kinks, some Stones, some Beatles, maybe a little bit of Velvet Underground too. Then on their breakout follow-up album in 2013, uh, we are the 21st century, a lot of the same stylistic influences came through on this record, but the band played them way straighter, not changing every few seconds or, you know, constantly shifting in style. It's like they would stick to a sound and and, and just carry it out through a whole tune. Less quirky and eclectic at the end of the day, but still a pretty compelling album. But then it was like the band completely went off the deep end with this super lackluster Jonathan Rado solo album. And then the, the record and star power. A near 90 minute headache that was badly recorded, badly performed, and barely written. I'm amazed this thing made it onto the Jag Jaguar discography. Like the label didn't you know, turn it back and just be like, hey, you should go back to the drawing board on this one. I don't think anyone would have blamed them. I could rant about this record all day. I will not. Uh, now, that brings us to this new record, Hang, an album that fortunately I did not go into this thing anxious or expecting a bad album because I thought the singles leading up to this record were so great, namely the song America. This track was politically charged. It was epic. It was triumphant. Not only is this track a captivating mix of critique and tribute, but it also is a bit of a return to form for Foxygen, as they brought back their restless compositional style that throws in everything but the kitchen sink, stylistically and instrumentally. This song features elements of piano rock and glam rock and symphonic instrumentation, a touch of carnival music too. At one point, there's almost an old school musical theater quality to all of it, which is kind of fitting considering the band is going back to the sound of an album titled Take the Kids Off Broadway. But the difference now between Hang and that older Foxygen sound is that here, in 2016, they are working with immaculate production. The pianos sound great, the drums sound great, the guitars sound great, the symphonic instrumentation sounds awesome. The one weak link in the chain, though, I would say is most likely the vocals. Sometimes they do get buried in all that instrumentation, and in other occasions, uh, the apparent Mick Jagger or Lou Reed influences are a little too apparent. Like, it's as if they took Let It Bleed Mick Jagger and threw him onto this record. Aside from that, everything on this album is balanced and mixed incredibly well. And sure, while in a way it does kind of take away from that rough around the edges, lo-fi quirk from the band's early years, the rich and wonderful and inspiring instrumental passages on Hang are a good exchange. And it feels like Foxygen's songwriting has matured a little bit on this record too. While there is a lot of complexity and density to this album, the compositions on here are always looking for another direction to shift in. Those shifts, those progressions feel a little more fluid, a little more logical, not quite so <laughs> random. Considering how much just happens on every single one of these songs, even the shortest tracks on here, it's no wonder that this record is just like 33 minutes long. It must have taken an incredible amount of effort just to compose a third of this album and record it so it sounds just right. Especially since it sounds like the duo went through the trouble of making this record sound as old school as possible. I'm not saying that the nostalgia is gonna bash you over the head like a bat wrapped in barbed wire, but you know, th there's certainly a bit of a vintage feel to the sound of this instrumentation. Even though it does feel like Foxygen gives us a lot in a short amount of time, uh, uh, I still do wish it was a little longer. A little longer. Might be greedy of me, but I wish it was a little longer. On the whole with this record, there's a lot to celebrate, a lot of good things going on, and especially a lot of improvements from and star power. But if there is one glaring flaw about this record or something that I think is going to rub some people the wrong way, is that the band plays it really, 
really schmaltzy on some of these tracks. They turn the camp up to 11. Could be the theater vibe going on in these songs, could be the, the symphonic instrumentation. I'm not completely sure what's fueling it, but it's there. And it makes some songs like Avalon a little much, especially as the band suddenly transitions into this show tune jazz in the second half of the track. But I can't deny that the unbridled fun that Jonathan and Sam are having recording this album didn't sort of wear on me a little bit and warm my black cold music critic heart, even when it comes to some of the corniest moments on this album. And, you know, I, I would be omitting uh, an important fact if I didn't say uh, that it's very apparent that Sam and Jonathan are self-aware about the sound that they're creating here. They know how this type of music is going to sound to an audience in 2016. So as a result, they decide to just go full throttle and totally off the wall. I love the intro track on this album, Follow the Leader, the very sexy, smooth bass lines and keyboards on the verse are great. The hot bright horn intro of the song is fantastic too, and the way the strings fly in and soar over the verse is some incredible inspiration. The background, the Motown flavored background vocals are great. The band tributes this old mix of rock, pop, and soul with some serious class, although this is one of the moments on the album where I think the vocals kind of compete with the instrumental a little too much. The song On Lankershim is one of the shorter tracks in the track listing, but still packs a punch. The vocal harmonies and the driving groove on this track in the first half kind of has a Fleetwood Mac kind of vibe. There's also a country flavored pedal steel hanging in the background that's very beautiful. But then the track ends with the kind of horn back pop rock that a Bruce Springsteen fan could appreciate, peppered with these catchy refrains of who walk away. Walk away. The even shorter Upon a Hill is just full musical theater with a classic Broadway finish with these ascending chord progressions and like this tight horn uh, arrangement. The song almost feels confessional, like a monologue from a character in the middle of a story arc. And the song Rise Up is an immense and a proper closing track. Sounds like a goodbye, feels like a goodbye, the lyrics and the saying turn super sentimental, making references to the 1960s children's book uh, Where the Red Fern Grows. The lyrics also hit the listener with all these weird cluttered cliches of singing for love and everybody wanting to change the world. There are also some blisteringly loud guitars over the instrumental finish of this track. It's like the band is trying to subvert their own end. It's like they're trying to sour the mood of their exit stage left. The one track that really didn't leave that much of an impression on me has to be the song Trauma. Easily the most underwritten track on the entire album as it just kind of rehashes this one idea, this one groove, and propels it, ascends it toward a very noisy, chaotic finish. It's all right, but not as intricately written or composed as many of the other tracks here. And with the album being so short, a moment like trauma doesn't seem so necessary. Seems like the band should be hitting us with all killer and very little in the way of filler. Still though, a lot of great tracks on this album, great compositions, great instrumentation, very ambitious songs, a lot of detail, a lot of complexity, and a lot of fun and a lot of personality too. Sure, it does get buried a little bit in Foxygen's obvious influences a little bit, or the heavy, dense instrumentation, and I do wish the album was a little longer and maybe a smidge more conceptual to kind of tie all of these tracks together because while they all do reek of the camp that Fox Oxygen has doused this album in, uh, they do still kind of feel like a bit of a mixed bag. Overall, very good effort from Foxygen, feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this thing. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe. And please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment if you're angry. Foxygen. Hang. All sorts of other videos in the channel subscription button next to my head. Have a good day forever.